what is up everyone and welcome back to your daily dose of VR news. Today I have quite a few new game releases for you and we also have a few hardware releases. That and more in today's video. So as usual in case you guys enjoy it make sure to smack that little subscribe button down below and let's get right into the video. First on the list we have something quite sad but the last pieces of the Oculus branding are now disappearing. The MetaQuest branding has taken over the Oculus website. And while we already knew that the Oculus brand was pretty much dead in the water, we didn't know how fast it was going to happen. Earlier on, we already saw the MetaQuest branding taking over a few promotional pages, but now it seems it has taken over the actual website itself. The Quest 2's transition from Oculus to Meta is nearly complete. Back at its Oculus Connect conference last month, Meta, which announced its new name to replace the Facebook branding at the event, confirmed that it would be phased out parts of the Oculus brand to instead focus on its new name. At the time, the company said the transition would be gradual, and we first saw the MetaQuest advertising a week later. Now, the logo is fixed to the top of the Oculus.com website as well. So it seems that the Oculus.com website is actually staying. I mean, if you ask me, it would be kind of weird if they removed it, considering the Meta.com website is already something completely different. So it's not like they can just use that for Oculus products, and the products themselves still say Oculus on them. It definitely seems like the Oculus branded quests might become some form of a collectible, as well as other Oculus branded items. Lucky's Tail has arrived to standalone. This is actually really exciting for anyone that has nostalgia vibes. I personally first owned the CV1. That was my very first VR headset that had six off. And before we got touch controllers on the CV1, it was entirely Xbox gamepad. In fact, I still have have my Xbox gamepad from the CV1. It's right here. And one of the very first games you could play on the CV1 was Lucky's Tale. And it seems it has now arrived as a surprise release on the Oculus Quest 2, fully standalone. Uh, this just brings me nostalgia vibes. I'm super happy about this. Oculus Rift, launch title, and one of the very first VR exclusive games, Lucky's Tale is now available on the Quest 2. Developer, Playful Corp, surprise release to the game on the standalone platform today for $19.99. It's a remastered version of the original title that shares the same content as the original, but features improved lighting and performance. Remixed audio and Lucky's character model and animations have been taken from the non-VR sequel, Super Lucky's Tale. So we actually mentioned this on the live stream yesterday where we unboxed this bad boy. According to me, it looked a little bit cursed, but chances are it looks a little bit cursed simply because I was used to the original and just see Seeing it remastered like this completely took me off guard. But either way, it's definitely going to have some of those hardcore nostalgia vibes that I'm looking for. I'm probably going to be getting this, even though I already have it on PC VR. But let me know what you think about this one down below. Have you ever played Lucky's Tale? Did you have the CV1? Maybe you're still playing on the CV1. Unreal brings the first AR glasses to America via Verizon. The Unreal Light is the first AR glasses product available in the USA, launching in less than two weeks via Verizon. We talked about the and real light a little while back. It looks super cool. It also looks super, super sleek. The light was previously only available in Germany, Spain, Japan, and South Korea. It weighs around three times a heavy pair of sunglasses or a third of the Magic Leap One headset. To achieve this form factor, the light is powered by your smartphone over a USB cable, and there is no battery or full-fledged chip on board. The light is priced at $599, while Enreal says that you can mirror any Android or iOS device to a floating virtual screen in front of you to use the actual augmented reality capabilities, including positional tracking and AR apps, you'll need a compatible Verizon flagship device. Okay, cool. So this thing has positional tracking. Okay, so we have a few devices on here on the list, and it doesn't look like the OnePlus 8 Pro is on here, but the OnePlus 8 is, which makes me wonder whether my device would be compatible. I would totally go to Germany just to buy this, because I am super, super into AR. In case you guys are interested in this or want to read the full article, of course, it's going to be down below as usual. Now, this one, this one may or may not come as a surprise to some of you. Haptex, Meta's glove tech sustainably identical to our patents. So we talked about Meta's epic, really cool glove tech in like two videos back. It was like one of the coolest things I've seen. Like seriously, super cool. But it seems like Haptex isn't happy. Force Feedback Gloves pioneer Haptex says the microfluidic technologies Meta showed off yesterday appear to be substantively identical to its patents. Most VR gloves simply attach tiny vibration motors to your fingers, but Haptex revealed a Force Feedback microfluidic prototype back in 2017. In late 2018, it announced its first product, Gloves DK1. In January, 
it, it revealed the gloves DK2, which are smaller, lighter, and more comfortable, with enhanced haptic fidelity. Meta's blog post claims its AR slash VR interaction and input research team was formed seven years ago, with serious work on a haptic glove starting at least four years ago. It doesn't mention haptax. Here's the full statement from CEO and founder Jake Rubin. Over the last decade, Haptex has pioneered the field of microfluidic haptic feedback. Our award-winning technology has been widely covered in the popular and technology press, and we've worked tirelessly to develop and promote the unique benefits of microfluidics as an approach to high-fidelity haptic feedback. With long-standing dedication of our engineers, developers, and investors, we have also secured an industry-leading patent portfolio to protect our technology and products. Scrolling a little bit down, today, Meta announced their own prototype microfluidic haptic feedback glove. The core components of this prototype, including the silicone-based microfluidic tactile feedback laminate and pneumatic control architecture, appear to be sub substantively identical to HaptX patented technology. We welcome interest and competition in the field of microfluidic haptics. However, competition must be fair for the industry to thrive. While we have not yet heard from Meta, we look forward to working with them to reach a fair and equitable arrangement that addresses our concerns and enables them to incorporate our innovative technology into the future of their consumer products. Whatever you want to think about this, to be completely honest with you, I'm going to wait on a statement. I do like hearing both sides of the story before I can take a side. So let me know what you think about this one down below. Demio. Oh yes, Demio. Damn, I love Demio. For those of you that don't know, I was introduced to Demio by Fia, Thrill Seeker, and Protostar, and we all played it on a live stream. And since then, I've absolutely loved the game, and we've played it with my parents quite a bit. It's a fantastic game, in case you guys are looking for something like um, a dungeon. I don't even know what to call it. It's like a dungeon. You roll a dice, you're in a dungeon, you need to beat enemies, and you have little characters that you move along a playing board. I have no idea what to call that kind of game. DND? No, no, I was never invited to DND, so I don't know what that's like. <laughs> Demio's third dungeon launches next month with the Bard. Cooperative VR dungeon crawler Demio is getting its third dungeon next month. The third adventure is called Roots of Evil and launches on December 16th. As with the latest set of levels, Realm of the Rat King is totally free for players that already own the game. You can expect the game's new levels to follow a different theme from the previous two adventures. Based on the artwork below, it looks like this installment might have players exploring forest environments. Roots of Evil will also introduce a Bard to the game, though it's currently unclear if this is an all new class or a new mechanic that might offer players stat buffs in some way. And a quote from Demio themselves on Twitter. The third Demio adventure, Roots of Evil, will arrive on December 16th, 2021, featuring a bard, new levels, and more. That's really cool. Demio, I love its art style, seriously, and the fact that you can get up close and personal to the characters would mean that I would seriously love a level made out of a forest. I don't know, I just, I love that vibe of seeing trees all around me and stuff like that. It would be really cool. But yeah, of course, as usual, in case you guys want to check out the full article, it's going to be down below. And let me know what you think about Demio. Epic's Team Sweeney on the Metaverse. Epic's Team Sweeney says the Metaverse is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. The chief executive officer of Epic Games sees the Metaverse as a potentially multi-million dollar part of the world economy. Team Sweeney's Epic Games is of course the company behind the global phenomenon that is Fortnite and the Unreal toolset responsible for making it. To quote, the next three years are going to be critical for all of the Metaverse aspiring companies like Epic, Roblox, Microsoft, and Facebook. Sweeney is quoted as saying, it's kind of a race to get to a billion users. Whoever brings on a billion users first would be the presumed leader in setting the standards. Is this kind of like a game to them? I don't I don't know. I don't think that's the right uh, mindset. That's like the corporate mindset. I don't know whether we can have that in the metaverse. I could be wrong though. I could be reading into this completely wrong. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about that one down below. What is this, the fight for the golden egg? And our final piece of news is from Ultraleap. Ultraleap is actually a technology that pioneers in hand tracking. I do believe that in the past they bought out this. This is a leap motion device. It's used for hand tracking and we have a Steam VR driver for it, meaning that if you slapped it onto the front of something like a Rift S, you can have hand tracking on the Rift S. It's also pretty cool in case you just want to swipe in order to change your songs. I've showed this technology off before, but you can actually connect it to a Windows PC and go, next song, or pause or 
volume up. It's actually really cool and quite futuristic if set up correctly. Ultraleap, a leading company focused on hand tracking interfaces, this week announced it has secured 60 million pounds, which is roughly about 82 million dollars Series D investment, with the goal of expanding its hand tracking technology and mid-air haptic tech in the XR space and beyond. Formerly known as Ultra Haptics, Ultraleap was founded after a UK-based haptic company acquired leading hand tracking tech company Leap back in 2019, which is where the Leap Motion comes from. The new name clearly defined the merger's unique combination of mid-air ultrasonic haptics now underpinned by some of the best hand tracking tech in the industry. So this is quite exciting. I'm a big fan of hand tracking. And if you really think about it, the current thing that we really need with haptic gloves is six DOF tracking. But what if you could have a haptic glove that just does all the haptics and you don't need to worry about the six DOF tracking, the six DOF positioning of the glove and you just used hand tracking for that. So hand tracking from the headset itself for positioning and then just have the haptics on the glove. You can make them slimmer and hopefully cheaper, you know? Just, just a little thought for you right there. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. If you guys liked it, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. In case you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below and check out our Reddit, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. Thank you so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys help me out a ton, paying my bills, buying better gear, and just overall making this content better. So thank you so much for that. And if you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that does not put a huge ad on your body. And if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.